something for me I want you to do something I want you to get for me Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1 and then I want you to get 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 17 I want you to see now what you have been doing this morning is merely praising God and I don't want nobody to ever rob you of the gift that God has given you for the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 and the verse is number 1 the Bible says what the Bible says stand fast in other words he said don't you move he said but you stand that was a military term I wish I had five minutes with that but he says stand fast read Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ he said you stand fast in the liberty in Christ do you know what he's saying here can I help you see this he said that you have been free in Christ Jesus and you need to stand fast in your freedom. Boy, if I had 10 minutes, he goes on to say, and don't be entangled. In other words, he said, don't you go back and be entangled with this paganism. You have been freed. And I tell you something, where the spirit of the Lord is, that is liberty. We have put shackles on folk. We have put handcuffs on folk. But where the spirit of the Lord is, that's liberty. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says what? Now the Lord is that spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. Read. And where the spirit of the Lord is. And where the, the only thing that we have to make sure of is that the spirit of the Lord is in here. He said because if the spirit of the Lord is in here, then that's some freedom. Yeah. Beloveds, we have liberty in Christ. We have been free. We have been set free. And I hope, trust, and pray that these series of lessons on worship will help you see that we have been freed in Christ. Walt, I like my old way better, man. Take, take this thing back, man. Take this thing back. They trying to help they preach it. They be trying to help they preach it. They say, preach it. The recording. I want you to know that, that we're free, y'all, and that's liberty in Christ Jesus. Now, we started a series on last Sunday. I want you to walk with me. And I want everybody, and let me tell you, and I told the 730 crowd this. Let me tell you, I am going to do some, say some things today that is not normally said in the church. Now, all I ask you to do, all I ask you to do is listen to me. Go back and study for yourself that's all i ask you to do you know as you're preaching i told the seven boy we had we had some church in here at 7 30. Right. let me tell you something let me tell you something here's here's what i want you to do for me as your preacher i want you to have enough love and respect for me uh, about the word of god that not not that you just believe whatever i say but it would spark an interest and cause you to go back and search the text for yourself that's all I want you to do. That's all I want you to do. I don't want you because you've been in the church a long time to cancel out what I'm about to say because you've never heard it before. I better go over here. They looking funny over there. Let me tell you something. I don't want you to delete what I'm about to say until you investigate it. 
Uh, I told him this morning and, and yesterday was a great day for me. It rained all day, Brother Brian. Mama was gone. Uh, mama was gone. Uh, and I tell you, out of, out, of, out, of the, out of the 16 hours that I was up on yesterday, Brother Jernigan, I promise you, 12 of them, I was in that book. 12 of those hours I, I studied. And then I left my cell phone in the car so the phone wasn't ringing. Are you hearing me? And I just wilded and no sooner than she got home, she said, can't you get that trash can from my front of the house out? It's over. <laughs> it's over. But what I'm trying to say, trust me. Trust me enough to open up your mind and to open up your understanding because church, we have got the wrong idea about this worship thing. So journey with me to Genesis chapter number 22. Chapter number 22. I won't be preaching this morning. We'll be in a Sunday school mode. When you leave here today, I want you to know something. I want to free you with your worship. Genesis chapter number 22. Are you there? And the Bible says, And it came to pass that after these things, that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, I am here. And he said unto him, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get into the land of Moriah and offer, offer he there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell unto thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled up the ass and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son and a cleave of wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. The Bible says in verse 4, then on the third day, Boy, that's some preaching. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the ass, while I and the lad go yonder and worship. Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the, young, and, and the youngest go and worship and come again unto you. Spirit of the living God, saturate this place with your love. Open up our hard drive that we might download your word. Father, we pray now that, 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 that we're not interested in what we think or what we've been taught, but we are interested in the unadulterated word of God. We pray, kind master, that they can see very little of me and more and more of you. We pray, kind master, that we can separate ourselves from what we think, how we feel, what we believe, and go back to the word of God. And then when we find those things to be true, I pray that you would open up our minds that we might be able to adjust ourselves accordingly. And, and we'll be very careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. And all of God's children said amen. You may be seated. We want to continue uh, our subject, the thought, worship, what is it? Part two. Worship, what is it? Part two. Worship, what is it? Part two. Beloveds, I'm afraid that too many come to church because it's Sunday. Yeah. Other than to worship. Yeah. I'm so afraid today that too many come to find out what's going on. Rather than to give praises to God and worship his holy name. My brothers and sisters, too many of us come to get a blessing opposed to being a blessing. Are you praying with me? You see, one of the reasons why we've got this worship thing messed up. It's because we don't worship throughout the week. We don't worship on Monday and we don't worship on Thursday and we don't worship on Saturday. So when we come here, we don't know what to expect. We come here because of formality and ritual because we have not yet communicated with God throughout the week. You see, we have messed up church teaching people that worship is giving and singing and praying and communion and, and, and those five items. We've told people all of our lives that that's worship. 
but let me help you understand something we have two services here and at 7 30 i did those five items i gave i sung i did the communion i preached and i prayed i did that at 7 30. now at 10 30 i did not give again and i did not take the communion again so are you telling me because I did not do those five items I haven't worshipped, yes, that I only worship at 7.30 and have not worshipped at 10.30. Okay. Beloveds, I'm trying to tell you something. I want y'all to help me now. Help me in here today. I'm going somewhere. This, <laughs> Father, in the darling son, Jesus' name, help me to stay focused. Help my audience to help me that we might be able to preach and to teach your word. Give us strength, Master. And we'll be very careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloveds, that's what we've confused worship to be. I stop by to tell you that worship is more than that. We've told people that we, we, we believe that coming to gospel meetings or revivals and, and Bible study, that that's not worship. We don't believe that that's worship because we don't participate in those five items. Beloved, but let me tell you something. That's that, that is far from the truth as you, what is worship? If you asked a hundred people in this audience, you would get 75 different answers. You would get 75 different answers. You know, you know why? Because we just don't know. Well, Glenn, tell us what worship. I'm glad you asked that question. To worship God is to quicken the conscience to the holiness of God. To worship God is to feed the mind with the truth of God. To worship God is to purge the imagination by the beauty of God. To worship God is to open the heart to the love of God. To worship God is, be, to, is to be devoted to the will and to the purpose of God. Glenn, all of that sound good, but you haven't given me any Bible for any of it. Get from it in the back. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. Here's a scripture that we have butchered, that we have taken and, and left half of its context in the context. Let me show you. It's all through the Bible. It's all through the Bible. Romans, put it up on the screen. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. The Bible says what, Press? And I beseech you therefore, brother. Paul says to the Roman church, I wish I could tell you, from chapter 1 to chapter, okay, no, I'm not going there. He says, I, I beseech you, brethren. He says, I'm pleading with you, brethren. Read. By the mercies of God. He said, by the mercies of God. That you present your, your bodies as a living sacrifice. That you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy, holy acceptable and acceptable God, unto God, which is your reasonable, which is your reasonable service. service. Rastis, read. And be not conform, and be to, not this conform to this world, but be ye but transformed, be ye transformed by, the renewing, by the renewing of your mind. Now, that here's what I want you to see. Two of the most precious things in this text we run over. That's because we miss worship. He says now, he says now, first of all, that our life has to be a living sacrifice you better get this he said now if you're going to be connected with God then every day of your life you have to be connected with God he said it's a you are a living sacrifice secondly he said that we have to renew our mind so let me tell you what worship is worship is being a living sacrifice to God and having a renewed mind you don't think like you used to think you don't go like you used to go because your mind have been changed Paul said to the church at Philippi let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus when you change your mind change your thinking change your going then you connect with God and you worship him every day of your life All right. every day of your life beloved the Greek word worship comes from an Anglo-Saxon word, which is prosteneo. It was an ancient word which means a person to kiss the hand of a superior. It was a word which means to prostate. Watch this. To prostate oneself. To lay down and look up to a superior and 
kiss his hand in love, trust, respect, and awe. That's where they got the word from. It means to look up to a superior and kiss the hand. It describes what a dog does to his master. That's what worship is. Let me ask you, let me ask you, let me, let, let me talk to you. Can I talk to you? If God, Lord help me, is to be worship with all of this reverence and all of this respect and all of this awe, then why do we do him like we do him? How can we come in to, to his presence late? How can we sit here in the pews and, and not sing? How can we sit here and, 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 and allow baskets to go by and God has blessed us with an abundance and yet yes. we don't want to give back to God. How can we sit here and somebody is petitioning God on our behalf and we don't pray? Amen. Beloved, let me tell you, uh, uh, the email came in last week and, and, and I just want to tell you, uh, somebody said that they thought I said that you don't have to give. Mm. Uh, uh, here's what I said. If you have it and you don't give it, then you didn't worship. Not just if you can sing and you didn't sing. If you can pray and you didn't pray. Are you seeing this? You didn't worship. Beloved, what I'm trying to tell you, worship is an attitude. It is a way of life watch this now the word the word the word worship comes from an english word where we get the word worth ship now if he's not worth anything to you let me go over here they look in front stephanie if he's not worth nothing then you okay i told him uh, my example uh, one of my one of the closest things to me now, now this is just an example y'all it's just an example is my computer my desktop computer. I've got over 6,000 books on my computer. And Destiny, every sermon I ever preached is on my computer. And let me tell you something. I don't like nobody messing with my computer. When the kids say, well, well, Dad, I need to use your computer. I'd rather go buy them. Y'all not hearing me. I'd rather buy you a computer to keep you off of Y'all not feeling me. Every Friday, every Friday, I defrag my computer. Are you hearing me? Man, I treat my, because that, 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 that computer is important to me. Now, I got a laptop. I got a laptop. I only use it when I go out of town and whatever I use on that laptop, because I down drive, I put it on the jump drive and I transfer. You can use that laptop. I, you, you can borrow that unless I ain't out of town. If I'm in town you take it with you. You know, treat it right, but, but, but take it away. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. We treat Jesus like I treat my laptop. See, 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 we need to treat him like I treat my desktop. Because I don't want you. What I'm telling you is if it's worth something to you, if it's worth, if Christ is worth something to you, then it's easy to come in here and wash up. Just stay on the bus. Just stay on the bus. Just stay on the bus. Because I want you to know, worship is not giving. Worship is not taking, rather. Worship is giving. And I hope that each and every one of us here today, that's our purpose. Beloved, beloved if you want to learn how to dress, get you a DQ magazine. If you want to learn how to fish, get a fishing and hunting book. But if you want to worship God, let me tell you, don't come in here. When you come in here, leave your trouble out there. Leave that red bill out there. Leave that disobedient child out there. And come in here and allow your mind to connect with his mind. And I wish I had prayer for you. Beloved, I want you to know that the Bible gives us over, over 87 Hebrew and Greek words that refers with the concept of praise and worship. 
I'm not going to do them all today. Thank God somebody said. There are over 600 references in the Bible about prayer. Beloved, worship is an absolute, non-negotiable thing to a believer. Worship to a believer is what an engine is to a car. Worship to a believer is what the heart is to the body. You've got to have it. Now, now, now. There are, and I did this extensively last week. Need to get you a CD where you can study. But there were four types of worship. That was four. That was the worship that they found in Mark 7 and 7. The Bible says, how be it? In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Let me just give you a little background. From Malachi, when, 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 when God put the pen down in Malachi and then picked it up in Matthew chapter 1, that was 400 years of silence. Silent. It, it, they're called the silent years of the Bible. There were four major religious groups at that time. That was what was called the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Zoloths, and the Elah, and the Elamans. But now watch this. The Pharisees was the most prominent at that time. Watch this. In those silent years, they came up with the Jewish oral law. It was the Jewish oral law. Now, the scribes came back and copied it in what was called the Mishnah. The Mishnah was, was their book. It was about 65 pages and it contained 613 laws that the Pharisees had come up with. Now, get this, y'all, because this is so important. God did not mind them having their, their oral law. He didn't mind. He, if you want to wash your hands like this and put the water on your elbow and let it, God didn't care about that. What made what got God's attention is when you made that law more important than his law. Wash your hands any way you want as long as you don't bind it on people. Are you hearing me? I, if I had time, I'd show you. He didn't have a problem with the Jews with, 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 with Moses' law. He didn't have it. But the problem he had is when you said Christ plus circumcision then he had a, a serious problem because it's Christ plus nothing when you put Christ and we we put Christ plus in the church but let me tell you it's Christ plus his grace and that's it now watch this so that was that was the, that was the the, the, the vain worship then that was what was called angel worship some some scholars called it wheel worship it was over in Colossians chapter 2. You remember, uh, that was a group called the Gnostics. Gnosticism. Not Gnosticism, get this, Bacoma. Gnosticism taught that, 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 that man could be saved by knowledge. But not faith, but knowledge. That's why he wrote in Colossians 2, verse number 8. He said, beware, lest any man deceive you through vain philosophy and the rudiments of men. He said, you beware of angel worship or a wheel worship. And then that was what was called ignorant worship. Now, the Athens there at that time, uh, they worshiped, they, they, they were way off. Uh, in 17, somewhere around 23, they built them a, 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 a statue, an engraving, and they put on that the unknown God because that was something that was called pantheism, meaning that they worshiped many gods, and then that was polytheism, which simply mean that they had, they had the God of nature. You know, they had bull gods and sun gods and all of these kind of gods. So what, 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 what Jesus came to do is not to deal with, true, with, 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 with vain worship. He came not to deal with ignorant worship, he came not to deal with with will worship he came to deal with true worship Jesus says now if you want to learn how to worship me you got to learn true worship stay on the bus y'all I'm trying to get to the text beloved I want you to know that's why David wrote in Psalms 34 and verse number one he says I will bless the Lord at all time his praises will continuously be in my mouth David said now that's worship David says that is not a time in my life that I won't bless the Lord he says I'm gonna bless him content I wish I had praying for he says when I get up I'm gonna praise him when I lay down I'm gonna praise him when I'm happy I'm gonna praise him when I've got money I'm gonna praise him when I'm broke I'm, he says I'm gonna praise him at all times 
He says, now, what's going to come out of my mouth is praise for God. Let me tell you, if you have not recognized that worship is a way of life, then coming to this building on Sunday ain't going to help you. If you don't realize that worship is not a way of life, then coming to this building on Sunday morning not going to help you. Not going to help you. You know, I was talking to my brother. Brother called me, man. He said, uh, he said Glenn, I'm going to tell on you, Prince. He said, he said, Glenn, he said, man, I felt like God was sitting up looking down on us just laughing, just happy. He said, man, listen at them how they singing to me. He said, man, I got so caught up in the worship. He said, it felt like it was just me and God. He said, he said, he, Prince said, I was singing so hard, man, and, and man, the spirit was riding so deep in my heart. He said, man, I didn't feel nothing. There wasn't nobody around me. It was just me and God. He says, and I believe God was sitting on his throne just happy about it. See, let me tell you, that's how worship ought to be. Worship ought to be that. I ain't worried about what's around. I, wish I, I ain't worried about who, what somebody have on. I'm not worried about how much, you know, I'm not worried about my red light beer. I'm not worried about my business. I'm worried about connecting with God. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Watch this. I got to get to the lesson. Don't leave me, y'all. Y'all got to see this. Now, 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 on last week, and I won't do it this week, on last week, we dealt with the woman at the well. We talked about the woman at the well. We, we, we explained about that woman. Now, I, I just want to make a few points, a few points I, I, that I want to hit about this woman because I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Uh, get from me John chapter 4 and verse 20. Put up there because I believe this will help you. John 4 and 20. Please listen. Please listen. Please listen. John chapter 4. And verse 20. Now, 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 I want you to read this with me. The Bible says, read. Come on. Our fathers worshipped. Underscore fathers right there. Underscore the word fathers right there. Keep reading. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Get it from the beginning. Get it from the beginning for me. Start at the beginning of the verse. Our fathers Stop. Worshiped. Our fathers. Underscore that. Read. Worshipped in this mountain. Stop. Two words that's very crucial in this text. Number one, she said, our fathers. You know what she's saying? The tradition that I've been taught. Y'all miss that thing. She said, here's what she's saying. She says, now I'm doing what daddy has taught me. Are you seeing this? Watch this. So, so the first thing I want you to see here is she's talking about tradition. And then she goes on and says, in this mountain, so her worship is a physical worship and not spiritual. See, her worship was about the place. She said, because if you're not on Mount Gizem, then you can't worship God. Are you seeing this? Now, 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 we have done the same thing. We have made worship a physical thing. And worship is not physical at all. Worship is a spiritual Talk back to me if you can. And beloved, the reason we're having so many problems is because we're worried about what our fathers has done and we're trying to get to the place. Can I tell you something? Watch this. He said now, in verse, in verse number 24, he said now, God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me ask us something. Do you think he was telling that woman when he told, you think he was telling that woman, okay now, you need to do the communion, you need to, uh, you need to sing, you need to pray, you need, come on y'all, walk with me. You need to, say, let me tell you, we know he wasn't telling us she needed to do the communion, Christ had not died yet. So when he was telling her about what true worship was, he wasn't giving her no five items. He was telling her, you are going to have to change your heart. Yes, sir. You got to change the way you think. You've been dating men. You've got experience with men. But now if you're going to worship me, you can't have. Are you seeing this? Beloved, what I'm so afraid of 
if we have told people what worship ain't. So when you walk into a worship service and it's high octane like this, you get to looking like we out of order. Well, I almost said something. I preacher almost got bad right there. But I, I'm not going there. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Watch this. Let me, let me go deeper. I want you to see something. I want you to do, see something. From verses 24, from verses 20 through 24 in the book of John, uh, he used the word worship 10 times in four verses. So we know worship is important. I want to show you something. I'm going to get to the heart of this. Genuine worship, don't miss this. Genuine, genuine worship must coincide with the true nature of God. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus revealed that God was a spirit. As a result, any kind of worship we give God has to be spiritual. Uh, watch this, watch this, watch this. Now, there are some examples in the Bible about spirit, the spiritual nature of God. You know, I told you last week, you remember when David went out on that rooftop and he stayed out there a little long and saw that man's wife and Watch that water go down the curves of her body and his imagination begin to go and had a go get her. I'm the king. I want her. Go get her. And he went and got her. And, and, and David must have had some strong feelings for this woman because uh, God was angry. The woman got pregnant. God was angry. And David prayed. David had the, 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 the woman's husband killed. She was, he was trying to get that woman. And he was trying to get that baby. Well, God had a different thing in mind. Stay on the bus. You got to see this. God had a different thing in mind. David wouldn't eat. David's servants knew something was wrong with him. What in the, wrong, what in the world is wrong with our master? But now watch this. God made his mind up that I'm going to take the child. So in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse number 20, watch what the Bible says. Read, come on, you're there? In 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 20, the Bible says, Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came to the house of the Lord and washed out. Worship. Please don't miss this. David says, okay, Lord, you took my child. I'm not going to rebel against what you've done. I'm going to clean up my life, and I'm going to try. I'm going to clean it up. Let me tell you something. He's teaching us that we can freely worship God with continuous sin one of the reasons I think God loved David so much is David knew how to repent. He knew how to repent. In Psalms 32 and in Psalms 51, David says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your tender mercy. He said, Blot out my transgressions, Lord. He asked God to forgive him. David knew that if I'm going to worship God, then I've got to get my old life but then I told you, I told you, you can't stay long here, but I told you, not only Edwin, our public sins, God deals with us with our secret sins. Get from it, better, better look at it. Psalms 19, verse 11. Somebody else, where well, we can rush through this. Somebody else gets Psalms 90, verse 8. Maybe we'll go to Hebrews 4, verse 13. And if we get a chance, we'll go to Psalms 139, verse 1 and 2. I want to show you something. You've got some secret sins. All of us in here got some secret sins. You walk in here and act like you ain't never stepped on a roach on Sunday. But let me tell you something. You got some secret sins. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says what? Read. Psalms 90 and 11. Now, now here, let's go here. Let's go here. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Now, he warns them. He goes back. Watch this now. Get this. He warns them and says that the law, uh, 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 the law was perfect converting the soul. Then he gave them some warnings. So now at verse 11, he says, Moreover, thy servant, then is thy servant warned. He said, and in keeping them, there is great reward. Yeah. He said, now, if I keep what you warned me, it's a great reward. But now watch what he says. Come on. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. He said, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins. You in ninth. I'm still at. Okay. okay Come right. on. Okay, watch this. He said, Here, get this here. He said, Who can understand his error. his error? You know what David is saying? I can't understand myself. 
He said, you can't, uh, ha have you ever heard somebody say something and, say, and, and then say, man, I don't believe I did that. Yep. Yep. Oh my God, did I do that? Yep. Let me tell you something. David's, David is teaching here. He said, man, there's some things in me that I don't even know. Amen. I don't even know. He said, he said, he said, who can understand his errors? He said, cleanse me from, the from my secret stuff. Beloved, we love it. Let, let me tell you something, Jamie. We all got some secret sins. There's some things in your preacher's life that I don't want you to know. That's why they are a secret. I'm not telling. There are some things in your life you don't want your preacher to know. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I said last week, and I, and I got to I gotta respond. I said last week, some of us done slept with Morris Chestnut and some of us done been with Alicia Keys and some of us have been with Rihanna in our mind, in our mind. Come on, talk back to, talk back to me. Hold on, let me get some preaching, y'all. Y'all better let me preach. Let me preach this thing. Golly. Now, 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 and then somebody told me, say, well, Brother Glenn, I ain't never wanted to be with nobody. Well, your secret sin might be jealous, jealousy, might be envy, might be, come on, y'all, might be strife, because we all have some secret. Okay, get Psalms 9 and 8 now. Uh, let's look at that one now. Come on. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. He said, thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sin. Our secret. See, we don't preach about secret sins. Don't preach about that. Remember, you in here right now thinking of something you don't have no business thinking about. <laughs> From California. Because your mind is just wondering and wondering. So David says, get this. Here's what he said. David said, man, help me fix my life so I can worship you. Help me with my public sins and help me with my secret sins. Because I want to worship you. Help me on the green one, man. Come on, help me. He says, because I want to worship you. Now watch this. Watch this. Please, please get it. Because here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at. We talked about the worship of repentance. The worship of repentance. Today we want to talk about the worship of devotion. Genesis 22. Now listen to me. There's a homonutical principle known as the first law of mention. That's a homonutical principle. It simply means, uh, uh, it means that when the word is first mentioned, uh, the doctrine is first mentioned, he said that it, it carries the idea throughout the, the meaning of the word throughout the Bible throughout the Bible. Now, I want to tell you something. The passage that we're reading, Genesis 22, that's the first place in the Bible that the word wash up is mentioned. Now, now stay with me now because, because this is not the first place where worship took place. It's the first place where the word appeared. You remember in Genesis chapter 4 shows us that Cain and Abel engaged in, 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 in a worship sacrifice to God. You remember in Genesis chapter 4 verse 26 tells us that they began to call upon the name of the Lord, but they did not mention the word. You remember in Genesis 5 22, he said that Enoch walked with God. But he didn't, he worshiped God, but he did not, but the word is not mentioned. You remember in Genesis 6 and 9 tells us that Noah walked with God, but the word worship is not mentioned. In neither of these verses, the word worship is mentioned. The first place it's mentioned is here in our text. And it describes the faith and the confidence that Abraham had. It teach us, it teach us the most powerful elements of worship. This verse, these verses that we're going to look here in just a few minutes is going to teach us about the character of worship. It's going to teach us about the condition of worship. It's going to challenge us about how to worship. It's going to answer the question, what worship really is. You got time for this? Stay on the bus. I want you to see something. Now watch this. This was God's seventh, seventh time appearing to Abraham. This is, and you know in the Bible, anytime you see seven, it means complete. This is his seventh time. You remember the first time God appears to Abraham 
in the Bible was in Genesis chapter 12 when he told him, he said, now get, get out of the land and get from around your family. In other words, God wanted to do something with Abraham, but, but he couldn't do what he wanted to do with Abraham being around his family. He said, now I want you to move. Sometime, listen to me, sometime you have to get from around your family. Preach, Glenn, I better go over here. See, sometime God has some things for you to do, but he can't do them because you are around God told Abraham, he said, now get from around. It wasn't nothing that something was wrong with his people. It's just he wanted to do something in his life, and he couldn't do it as long as he was outside. Okay, that's the first time. That's the first time that, that God appeared to him. But then he appeared to him a second time. You remember, he appeared to him a second time and showed him the land where God had purpose and worked for him. That's Genesis chapter 13, verse number 14. Don't have time to care. Then he appeared to him a third time. And he told him, he says, man, I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to fear not because I am your shield. He says, I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. That was the, th the third time that God appeared. But the first, fourth time he appeared, he told him, he said, now, I'm promising you a son. In chapter 15, verse number four, he says, I'm going to give you a child. And then the fifth time he appears to him, he appears to him as El Shaddai, God Almighty, in 15 and verse number seven. Now, you remember the sixth time he appears to Abraham is when he went before God on behalf of his nephew Lot. You remember Lot Cowboys was acting a fool and Abraham Cowboys was acting a fool. And he said, man, this shouldn't be between us. He says, nephew, pick which way you want to go and whichever way you pick, I'll go the other way. Well, when, uh, when, when, when Lot pitched his tent, he went for the grass and God appeared to Abraham and told him, he said, all the land that you've chose will be yours. Now that was the sixth time, but walk with me here because here is the seventh time that God appeared to Abraham. He appears to him the seventh time and he says, now offer me your son. Well, you got to get this, man. You got to get this. Now, now, here's what I want you to see. The first time worship is mentioned in the Bible, and this is the first time love is mentioned in the Bible. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? God doesn't appear in our life where there's no love and no worship. Are you hearing me? Let me, let me, let me. See, now, Abraham worshiped God based on God's word. God, said, God, God told, the Bible said, God tempt Abraham. Now, that's not a real good translation. The actual word that should be translated is tested. You remember in James chapter 1 verse 14, don't read that, he said God tempts no man. But now God tests us. Every school we attend, that is a test. Now the test that God tested Abraham with was the test of faith. See, let me tell you, this wasn't a multiple choice test. This wasn't a, a, a ABC, a pick, fill in the blank type test. This was a faith. And the only way you pass a faith test is through obedience to God. Amen. Beloveds, look at it now. I, I'm, right, I'm almost where you want me to be. Verse 1, God said unto him. Verse 2, and he said. Here's what I'm telling you. God told Abraham what to do. He said, now take now thy son, thy only son whom thou loveth, and offer it him. Then, he go, then God tells him where to go. He said, I, I'm telling you, God has always been a God of direction. You never had to wonder what God was telling. See, the reason we're so messed up is because the direction God was pointing to us, we took another direction. And that's why when somebody tries to take you back to the direction God was taking, it ain't, it ain't what you're used to, and you think... Watch this, watch this. All I want you to see, all I want you to do is stay with the text. God told him where to go. See, true worship, come on, y'all. True worship always is always guided by the word of God. Amen. See, true worship is always a response to the love of God. And true worship is always a matter of faith. Following the tradition and customs of men is simply not true worship. Amen. I'm going to show you. Things are going to get ugly right about here. Genuine worship is a response to what God has done and who God is. Man, when I understand who God is and what God has done, I can worship him. Now listen to me. Listen to me. 
Worship can be manifest or can manifest itself both vocal and verbal. Amen. Stay on the bus. I know we're not used to this. Just get a good dose of it. I'm going to give you a Bible. Just stay with me. Watch this. The Bible says in, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, starting at verse 14. Lord, Lord, help me right here. Let me tell you. The, the Ark of the Covenant was present. David was excited about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented God's presence. The Bible says when the Ark of the Covenant came, David got so happy until he started dancing, until he danced out of his clothes. But in chapter 7, chapter 7, just one book over, in chapter 7, the Bible says in verse 18 that David sat humbly before the Lord. Y'all, 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 please ride, ride with me. He sat humbly. Now, now here's two fears that he's, he worked. We see where he danced out of his clothes and we see where he sat, sat in the presence of God and both was accepted before God. That is not a New Testament verse to tell us that we cannot be both we don't find them canceling this out at all as a matter of fact get from me psalms 95 and verse number six psalms 95 and verse number six psalms 95 and verse number six when you get it just start reading psalms 95 verse number six the bible says what psalms 95 oh come let us worship listen 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 he says oh come let us worship and bow down and let the knees before the Lord. Let us bow these knees. Let me tell you, all of us can get on our knees right now and bow. And that still would be worshiping God. Man, that's some things that God stamped out from the Old Testament to the New. He stamped out the priesthood. He stamped out uh, the Sabbath day. He, but show me where he stamped out. Worship and praise. See, what we've done is, let me, let, let me tell you this. Man, now, y'all, y'all got to help me. Now, just let, let, I'm going to preach the rest of this. Let me preach it, though. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. See, see, here's what I want you to understand. Here's what I want you to say. It's not our position that God is concerned about. It's our condition. I just said something and you miss it. It's not our position. It's our condition. Are you hearing me? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Lord, and I know this is not what we, you know, I, they, and I don't forgot where it was, but they taught me what the Bible said, keep thy foot still. Uh, uh, and they saying that that means you couldn't pat your foot. Then they would take scriptures like, God don't worship with man's hand, uh, with hand. Man, they was talking about, you know, they wasn't talking about uh, uh, clapping your hands. They was talking about the building and stuff, where the building was made. And we done took all of this and tried to make this say what God has not made it say. Uh, all I want you to do is stay on the bus, y'all. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me tell you something. Hear me, hear me right here, boy. This is strong. See, we are God's creation. There's nothing else on the universe that's created in the image of God, but you and I. Let me tell you this, we were created, Dinus, to worship God. You were created to worship God. Beloved, God, let me tell you something, God's people are the most powerful people ever. See, our power come through our relationship with God and our relationship come through our worship of God. Now, Satan knows that, so Satan distracts our worship. He knows that we are powerful people, but what he does is he said, now, let me ease in here and distract them. He distracts us with stuff like, they don't sing out the red book. Man, that's a distraction. Red books ain't no Bible. They changed the Lord's Supper so I can miss it. If you get here on time, all of those are nothing but distraction. Satan says, if I can distract you, then you can't wash up, then you won't have the power. Yes, sir. And man, we get distracted about 
anything. The preacher, the preacher where I, where I grew up, he didn't walk all over the church. That's a distraction. And Satan says, if I could just keep them distracted, they'll never be empowered with the power that I want them to have. Man, let me tell you, God says, I didn't give them the spirit of fear, but of power. And you know what? We are the most timidest people in the world. I mean, anything coming, ooh, they passing out pink slips. I don't know. I might be next. Let me tell you what you ought to say to a pink slip. If you come to me, God gave me this job, and he'll give me another one. You know what you ought to tell? You know what you ought to tell? Tell them when you go and they say, well, you got some lumps on your breast. Okay, cancer, if you come into me, that means I might get a trip home to my father quicker than what I thought. We got to have some courage around here. We are the most scary and insecure people I've ever laid eyes on. Just scared. It's going to rain. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. Let me tell you something. God has empowered us. That's why we don't, we don't get nothing. We don't ask for nothing. We think God is this small. You know, I was watching, I was watching uh, Tyler Perry's uh, party the other night. Uh, what was the name of the thing? Uh, 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 the best part in town. You know, you watched it too, don't you? You know what, exactly what I'm talking about. If you didn't watch it, you DVR'd it. But you know what? Let me tell you something. We sit here and we talk. What is it? Too darn hot. Too darn hot. I know, sir. Now, the elder's wife told me the name of it. <laughs> well, I said, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Them people are, uh, uh, who, who we say uh, are cut off from God. Them people know how to ask God for stuff. They don't ask for little stuff like we ask for. Man, that man, that man, that, that man, that man. I mean, they, 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 they've taken him out of a box. We can't, we don't believe we can build a nursery. We can't buy up this. Man, we ought to have, a, we, we have the wrong mindset. We got God so little. You know, he, we can't do this, or we can't do that. Uh, this is not scripture. We can't. Man, let me, I've been here 23 years. We're supposed to have farm. We're supposed to be way up. We ought to have a place. Talking about feed. We feed the homeless once a month. They get hungry every day. Yes, sir. We ought to have the Lord's kitchen where they can come in and eat every day. Mm. Then we get mad about what they're teaching our children in school. How come we can't get together and have our own school? Because yes, we're not big enough to ask God to bless us like that. Mm. And we get what we ask for. You know why your marriage is in trouble? Because you're scared to ask God to fix it. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So God said, Satan says, if I can distract them in worship, if I can distract them, then I can keep them powerless. Let me, just, oh, let me give you a couple more. I'm, I'm finna come down. Look, look what he said in verse 3 of the text. Uh, uh, God commanded Abraham and he didn't hesitate. Abraham responded in faith and he submitted. He, he rose up that early in the morning. He saddled up his donkey. He took his two young men with him. He took Isaac. He took the cleave of wood uh, for the burnt offering. Let me tell you something. He went, he went to the place that God should. Surely, surely Abraham was troubled. You know, Lord, I, I, you, you said you was going to give me a son and now I'm old and, and, and you want him back? Surely that must have bothered him, man. But because Abraham was, wish, was willing to do what God said, he did exactly what God told him to do. Watch this. He said, take now thy son, thy only son. You got to get this point. Look at me. Please get me. Worship is not cheap. Y'all missed it. He took the most precious thing to Abraham. And he asked for it. Yes. Because what, let me tell you something. If your worship is cheap, All right. see, yeah. worship ought to cost you something. Yeah. It's going to cost you something. If you go, as a matter of fact, Jesus was teaching a parable. He told them disciples, he said, now, if you want to follow me, here's what you need to do. First thing you need to do is sit down and count the cost. Because yeah. it's going to cost you something to follow me. It's going to cost you your family. It's going to cost you your friends. It's going to cost you your time. Let me show you what it cost Abraham. Let me show, let me show you. It's right here in the text. It's right here in the text. You got to see it. You got to see it. You got to see it. Let me show you. Here's exactly what it, what it cost him. It cost him his time. 
Look, the Bible says three days it took him to get to the mountain. So it cost him his time. Look, it cost him his talent. Abraham had to build an altar. He had to use his talent, and then it cost him his treasure. He asked for his son. Those are the same three things God is asking for you. He's asking for your time, he's asking for your talent, and he's asking for your treasure. Man, he don't mind you having something else as long as what you have is not before what I have. Now watch this, y'all. I'm going to give you two more, and then I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I promise you. Look at, look, look, at verse, look at verse 5 again. And the Bible, and Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here and sit with the ass while I go yonder. See, when Abraham told the young men to sit there, he was going to worship. Man, he went up that hill. Please get this. Paula, why? I love this. Abraham wasn't worried about them two men down there. He wasn't worried about the donkey. He wasn't worried about, see, we worried about the wrong thing. When Abraham went up on that mountain, he wasn't worried about what was going down. See, you could worship God if you stop worrying about what's going on. When you just tune in with God, you, are you hearing me? And then what I really like about the text is he told them boys, he said, now, now y'all stay here with the ass for me and the boys going up to worship God. See, sometimes you have to leave people. I wish I could say what the Bible say, but you have to leave them with the donkey, okay? You got to listen. See, see sometimes if somebody's going to interfere with your worship, leave the... Watch this, watch this. Let me just, I'm telling you what true worship is. True worship is leaving stuff at the foot of the mountain where you can worship God. Sometimes you have to leave your job. Sometimes you have to leave your career. Sometimes you have to leave your business. Sometimes you have to leave your boo. Are you hearing me? Beloved, beloved, I'm trying to tell you something. That's what worship is. See, when we enter into the presence of, the presence of God with a mind and a heart to worship God, all of the stuff, see, you know what? And, 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 and I mean this with all the love in my heart. Man, when I'm sitting here, hi, when I sit here, I don't know what's going on. You ask me when we get home, Mama asked me, well, did you see? I don't know what nobody have on. I don't know what you, the only way I could remember what you got on is if you too big and you wearing a little bitty dress. <laughs> dress way up here, sitting up here looking like you just left out of club, stamp still on your hand, then I can, but I don't be knowing what folk have on. I don't know, I don't know, cause I'm not here for that. I'm not looking around trying to, oh, you, I better go over here. I'm not this, I'm not, man, I'm not in here for all, man, did you see that, did you see that shirt? No! I can tell you what was said in the message, because I'm not here for that. Now, if your spank is showing and you all on that, you know what I mean? Ah, now she knew, she knew she was wrong for that. She had to come in here like. Are you hearing me? Beloved, I'm not in here for that. I'm in here to worship God and all of this other stuff is tuned out to me. And that's why you can't worship. You were. Yeah, did you see? What was the title of his message? I think he talked to me. <laughs> you will never be able to worship God. Man, when you enter this, David said, David said, he said, you enter into his prayer. He said, he, in Psalms 100, I, I guess Psalms 100. He said, now watch this. He said, yeah, 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 Psalms 100, man. <laughs> now watch this. He says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. He said, now, man, man, we come in here, we ought to be making a noise for God. We ought to be able to sing and make a noise for God. He says what? Read. Serve the Lord with gladness. He says, you say, man, sometimes the brothers ask the brother, man, will you work? I guess. You can't get nobody else. And the Bible say, you serve the Lord with gladness. They ought to be able to look and say, brother, we don't need but one brother on that door. It ought to be three of them standing there because I want to serve the Lord. Whatever. I told them they called me and they was telling me, they said, man, we want you to preach at the, uh, at the lectureship. I said, doc, I don't have to preach now. I said, I come out there and, and direct calls. I, don't, I just want to be working in the church. I don't, and if I was out there, I'd be like, 
guy, cool guy. I'm, I'll be on that thing, man. Are you hearing me? Because I'm working for the Lord. And any way I can work and please him. Come on up in here. Are you hearing me? Man, we ought to, our attitude ought to be different about the way we worship God. We are so concerned about holding on to the tradition. Let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Boy, I got to get out of here. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That's a reward. Wor worship is service. That was my second. And then my last point here is that a reward for worshiping God. Look at verse 16 through 18. Uh, God owes no man. But Abraham demonstrated absolute faith in God. God gave Isaac back to him. He gave him back to him. Man, you got to see this. Abraham climbed that mountain. I know his heart was heavy. Lord, I don't know what in the world you're doing to me. I'm t you're taking the pride of my life. And I can see him taking that boy. But Lord, I just, but if you want him, then you just do whatever you have to do. And Abraham pulled out his knife. And the Bible says an angel came. That was a reward. Don't you know climbing up that hill was devastating? But coming down, that was a reward. I want to tell you something, y'all. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. Good times. Stop the clock. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I told my wife this morning, man, it tears me up to tell you. But I'll share it with her. I probably shouldn't. She was in there getting, cooking dinner. And I was getting my coffee, man, and I told her. I looked around and I said, Mama, we don't deserve none of this. I said, I haven't applied myself. Man, I, don't, I haven't applied myself to be your minister. I haven't, man. I, I spent my life drugging, smoking, gambling. But see, it's a reward God gave me for serving him. God has given me a reward. Because I serve, it's not that I've done everything. Man, you don't deserve that business. You don't deserve that job. You don't even qualify. Your degree and your position is totally different. But God opened up that door for you, man. You know, because it's a reward for selling him. I told a 730 crowd, Carlos don't deserve a husband as fine as I am. I said, it's a reward. She's been serving God. And God blessed her with me. Are you, seeing that? Are you seeing this? This is her reward. Are you seeing this? Man, God will give you a reward. If you serve him, he'll give you a reward, man. But you got to serve him. You got to serve him. Serve him. He'll reward you for serving him. Are you seeing this? Beloved, we don't serve God. That's why our reward is so short. Man, I serve, if, if this church constantly serve and serve, man, that God will reward us with everything that we think we can use. So I want you to know something. There's a reward in serving God. If you haven't been serving God, if you haven't been worshiping God, you need to change today. You need to say, I'm going to leave that old, that my old tradition at the foot of the hill, and I'm going up. And I'm serving God. And I promise you, when you serve him, God will reward you. Man, he'll reward you. I, I, my, 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 uh, I want to I I I tell you something. And please get this. I had a friend who had, and I, did, did I mess it up this morning? Had uh, gaspic, gaspic re, re, bypass. What is it? Gastric. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this. Here's what I want you to see. Here's what gastric bypass is. It's something that goes on on the inside that's manifest. You missed it. You missed it. See, worship, it goes on on the inside, and it's manifest. I was watching the game last night, uh, 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 Kentucky and Yukon, and that was a boy by the name of Ellis. Ellis, yeah, boom, boom, and and then, and then they, they did a little report on him. They said that he was kicked out his freshman year. And then he had a, a, a barroom brawl. And they put him off the team. And then they messed around and said that he saw his stepdad kill his mother at the age of 11. 
So when they told me what the boy been through, what was on the inside, I understood. Come on, y'all. I saw what took place on the inside. Now, the way you change him is by changing. <laughs> if you change his mind, you can change his behavior. Beloved, some of us need to change our mind. And when we change our mind, we can change our behavior. Everybody stand to your feet. Let me tell you something. Don't play with God. If what you're doing is exterior, if, 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 if what you, listen to me. But I wish I had a stand to get up high. Please look at, please look at me. Please, please, please look at me. No, hold on, deacons. Just hold on a minute. Y'all just hold on. Let me tell you something. L listen to me. Please don't walk on me. All this preaching I'm doing. My God. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If what you're doing is merely exterior, let me tell you something. You're not fooling God. You know? See, if what you're doing is not manifest on the inside, if you're just doing it because, you know, it sounds good or, you, you know, if you, it, 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 anybody saying like Lil Robert, or make you move. But let me tell you something. If you're not moving because of what's on the inside of you, you, you know, see, it's got to be something on the inside. Man, even when you sin, when you sin, sister, let me tell you, it's something on the inside that ought to just drive you crazy. It, it ought to just run you up a tree. When, when you can sin and, and, and go eat a steak dinner, something's wrong, man. So, see, there's no connection. There's no connection. When you can sit here and, and it doesn't bother you to, to step on a brother or sister, it, that's no connection. And you got to pray for a connection. It makes me feel awfully bad when I, when I do something or somebody say, Brother Glenn, you hurt my feelings, you know, because it bothers me because I care about you. And you're my brother. You're my sister. Good to see you, Ball. Amen. Yeah. Let's give Ball a round of applause, man. Good to see him. My brother been missing. And he's back. People care about him. Let me tell you something. I had three or four people to call me last week. What's Brother Ball's phone number? Yeah. Yeah. Called him. Called him and, and encouraged him. He's back. That's what it's all about. It's him today. It could be you tomorrow. Yeah. Throw your loving arms around him and tell him, man, the grace of God, how much you love him. Yeah. Encourage him. Yeah. It could be you tomorrow, man. You ain't so stuck in this thing that you can't fall. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Beloved, that's what family is all about. Yeah. Man, let me tell you, let's not just worship God from the outside. Some of us got, to, got, got a down pack. We got the dance. We got the cliches but there's no change in the inside. We're, go, we're gonna go out of here and do the same thing we've been doing all our lives because you have not changed on the inside. You, it, it's like termites. You know, the termites can eat wood and you look on the outside and the wood look good, but if you kick it, it crumbles because it's ate up. Some of us have been ate up by the spiritual termites. We ate up on the inside. We're just rotten to the core. All I want you to do is see me. See me. This ain't a show. Man, you are in the presence of God. And I wouldn't play with him. If I wasn't serious about this stuff, I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't, pray. I wouldn't come down here and make a confession if I knew I wasn't going to change my life. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I just say, you know, I, I, I'm just, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to get you. Know, but let me tell you something. Don't play with God. Don't play with God. Amen. He's too great. He's too big. He's too wonderful. He's too blessed. Let me tell you, we've got freedom in God, but don't allow your freedom become to become your stumbling block. Amen. Don't, don't allow your freedom to become your stumbling block. Thank you. Now, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. I don't know where you are, but if you feel like you've been disconnected, I want you to come. If you know you haven't been baptized, baptism puts you into Christ. The only way you get into Christ is through baptism. The Bible says, for we're all the children of God by faith, for as many have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. If you sin and you feel like you need to get back in step with God, I want you to come. If you feel like that, that, that this church is a church where you need to be, that you can grow and glow, 
I want you to come. Some of us are holding on, on the churches because they started in Big Mama's house. You're not learning nothing there. You're just there. Man, if that's where you want to be, we would love to have you. But if you're looking for a perfect church, don't come. Because we all messed up up in here. We all messed up. We got marital problems. We got children problems. You know, we, we do. But we, we have a Savior who's bigger than us all. I don't know who I'm talking to. You know I've been talking to you. You know you, you, know you need to come. Will you come start singing, Robert? Start singing. Come on. You're not coming to Jesus. You're not coming to James. You're coming to Jesus. Come on. Sweet I know. Stomp the loud mirror. 